I'm going to say something you've probably never heard before. Discord is a mess under Linux. I know, crazy revelation. Whether it's trying to do things like capture desktop audio while you're screen sharing, the missing game overlay, or the fact that it's based on Electron, and Electron is kind of slow. That's sort of a problem everywhere and not just on Linux. And I would say on the Linux side, people rightly have a problem with it. But that's just while using Xorg. Over on Wayland, Discord doesn't even know what Wayland or Pipewire even is. Now I know what someone's going to say. Stop using Discord. Discord bad. Use Matrix, IRC, XMPP, or anything else like that instead. But this isn't a real solution because a chat client has literally zero value if none of the people they want to talk to are on that client. So people are going to use Discord if their friends are on Discord. If their friends are on Matrix, they're probably going to use Matrix instead. This video is going to be heavily based on a write-up by the evil skeleton titled A Letter to Discord for Not Supporting the Linux Desktop. I'll leave this link in the description down below. I highly recommend you go and read it for yourself. And not just this, basically everything on this blog is absolutely fantastic. As of right now on June 1st, 2022, if you're using Wayland and the desktop version of Discord, you cannot screen share. Unlike OBS, it doesn't have the pipe wire capture support, so basically you can't do it. You can in the web version because most modern web browsers do support pipe wire capture. But funnily enough, it's not actually an Electron problem. Electron is actually the solution. The problem that Discord has is it's running a really old version of Electron. Right now, it is running 13.6.6, which does say it was only released five months ago. This is based on Chromium 91.0.4472.164. And you probably noticed something here. The only updates happening to 13.6, except this one right here, are basically just backported CVE fixes. Because 13 isn't the latest version of Electron. Electron has just released 19.0. Those versions in the 13 line are still considered stable versions, but they are no longer receiving feature updates, so when new things happen, basically it's just never coming to that version. There certainly was a time when it wasn't Discord's fault. There was a time when both Chromium and Electron didn't support pipe wire capture. That time has passed though, and Electron now supports it. Over on the Matrix side, the main Matrix client is Element. It is based on Electron 17.4.2 and Chromium 98. And it makes use of Pipewire Capture under Wayland perfectly fine. I do believe that version of Electron did have some level of Pipewire support, but back with those older versions, it was a little bit flaky and it would crash and you probably didn't really want to use it. I can understand why running that old version, you wouldn't want to enable it. Then there is the problem with the file picker. If you open up the file picker in Discord, it then tells Electron, open up the file picker. That will then tell the system, open up the GTK file picker. Doesn't matter if you're on KDE, doesn't matter if you're on GNOME, it'll open up the GTK file picker because at the time, that's just the way that browsers and Electron work. This was solved though with the XDG desktop portal. This basically makes a generic file chooser and then the system can provide whatever it wants to use. If you're on KDE, it'll provide a QT file picker. If you're on GNOME, it'll provide a GTK file picker. If you're on anything else, you can just pick what you want to use. This is a much better system, but it also means that when the application is in a flat pack, you can actually use the file picker properly. In Discord, if you open up the file picker, most of your file system isn't going to be visible because most of it just isn't accessible by the sandbox. So what you can do is give the sandbox access to your entire system, basically deleting the sandbox. What you actually want to do is use the desktop portal which tells the host system to open up the file picker and when you pick a file, it then gives the sandbox permission to that one individual file and nothing else on your system. But to the user, it still looks like you have access to everything. 
Once again, newer version of Electron just use the file portal and Element does the same. But there are some other issues. For example, Discord is just not really super safe to use. So you might have noticed in the update list here that 16.6 isn't even the newest of the old updates. You have this update here, you have this update here, and this update here. And most of what's being fixed here is CVEs. I don't know how extreme some of these problems are, but if you're on this version, all of these CVEs still affect it let alone probably the hundreds of CVEs that have been patched between Chromium 91 and Chromium, I want to say 102 is the latest, but it might be 101. Either way, there is going to be a lot of vulnerabilities that have just not been dealt with. And fixing that isn't just to the benefit of Linux users, it'll benefit the Windows and Mac OS users as well. You could probably argue the Windows users most, just because Windows is the primary target for malware. But I can totally understand why this couldn't just happen overnight. So you can't just go from Electron 13 all the way up to, let's just not say 19 because it's the newest version, let's go back a little bit to 18. The API would have massively changed between those two points, so you're going to have to basically re-architect a lot of the application. That is going to take quite a bit of time, but it'll also take time because they're not running a vanilla version of Electron. Because of the licensing of Electron, Discord does publish the changes they've made to it, and there is 27 commits they've made with 68 files changed. Now, some of these changes aren't really that massive. Others, though... It would take a little bit of time to port some of these changes over. And that's without considering the fact that some of these things may not be relevant anymore and might already be something built into Electron. So it would certainly take a while to properly get that done. But I feel like it is something that needs to happen at some point. And while we're making changes to improve the Linux experience, how about we get rid of the forced auto updates that break a bunch of package managers? So I have Discord installed through Pac-Man, and every so often, Discord will do an auto-update. And because that hasn't updated it inside of Pac-Man, Pac-Man is running an older version, but Discord thinks it's a newer version, and it's like not really sure what it's supposed to be doing. I have to then just go and reinstall the application through Pac-Man, and sometimes it works, other times it doesn't, and I switch over to the Canary version, then at some point that stops working, go back to the main version, and it's just a mess. Now the main reason that Discord probably doesn't really care about Linux is Linux is a very small platform for them, and Linux is fairly small for gamers in general. But the conclusion the Evil Skeleton came to is due to the growth and popularity of the Steam Deck, basically more gamers than ever are now using Linux. It's certainly still a fairly small pool of people, but it is much larger than it was before. And due to the way the distro is designed, more people than ever are installing the flat pack version of Discord. And with the state that it's currently in, basically they're receiving a pretty subpar user experience. Like you go from the Windows version of Discord where everything just works, you go into the Linux flat pack and what? Audio cap doesn't work if you're capturing from screen share, no overlay, file picker doesn't work properly. All of these things just don't make any sense. And the first thing we'd like to see is rather than using the deb file to distribute the file on Linux, instead do what OBS did and take over the flat pack. This is going to be the easiest way to distribute across every distro. And this will actually give every distro an official version of Flatpak. Right now, what everyone except Debian's doing is taking the deb and then basically unpacking it. This obviously does work perfectly fine, but by giving Discord the Flatpak, it would give them a lot more control over what they want to do. Along with rebasing onto a newer version of Electron, which will benefit basically all users. Now, <laughs> look, if we're being serious, it's really unlikely that Discord is going to do any of that. Maybe at some point they'll update to a newer version of Electron because, I don't know, they want to do something that's just not possible in the older version, but they're not going to do it to the benefit of Linux users. From my understanding, they basically have no Linux devs, and any Linux problems that are brought up on their forums 
are basically just left to rot. This isn't them doing it maliciously. I don't think that's why they've done it. They just don't focus on Linux as a platform. There is one thing I do want to address. Using Discord in your web browser. It's actually, for the most part, a better user experience. The desktop capture works just fine through Pipewire. Audio capture also works just fine because it's just capturing it through Pipewire. Pretty much everything you want to do is going to be good. Also, it sort of keeps Discord more in check because it can't just go snooping around the rest of your file system. The problem, though, is if you like to use push to talk, you can't use it unless you're focused on the web browser. And the time you probably want to use push to talk is when you're in a game, when you're not focused on the web browser. But knowing Discord isn't going to fix anything. I have a better solution. A solution where they really don't need to do anything. Just allow third-party clients. If you don't want to fix it yourself, let someone who makes a third-party client do it for themselves, and then don't ban users who are using that client. You can have your really outdated version of Electron that doesn't really properly function anymore. You can have this version of Electron which has a lot of CVEs that haven't been fixed. You can have this version of Discord that isn't really that editable, but just let people use a version that does all the things they want it to do and also works on Wayland. This was basically a TLDR version of the write-up. I highly recommend you go and read it for yourself. As I said at the start, it is a fantastic read. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you use Discord on Linux? And if you do, would you like them to fix it? If you've got any suggestions about how it could be fixed, I would love to hear them. If you think they should just let people use third-party clients and not worry about the problem, I would love to know about that as well. So if you like this video, go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, Sterling Veripay, linked down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.